Welcome to Conversations on the Coast, San Francisco's premier author interview program. You know, uh, when we have a program like this, I always search for some thought-provoking, easy way to start the program. And in this case, uh, I have had it delivered to me free of charge by the publisher. On the back jacket of this book, this collection of short stories by Nam Lee, is the following remark by one Mary Gateskill, who will forever remain sacred. (laughs) Nam Lee is extraordinary, she writes, a writer who must, who will be heard. The boat will be read for as long as people read books. Its vision and its power are timeless. Well, with those kind of words of praise, Nam Lee, welcome. <laughs> thanks, Jim. Thanks for having me. I've I've never heard anything so that's absolutely beautiful. It it's it really, uh, you know, it's we we discussed off air what drug she was on. But, uh, <laughs> she was uh, drug free and sober as a, as a she is my mouse. fairy godmother. That's what said. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get to such a high place? Where do you come from? Well, first of all, I should say that. Maybe Mary knows something that we don't about how long people are going to be reading books. <laughs> it could be a you whole know, question: how long they're going to be reading books? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So maybe for the next, you know, twenty four, twenty six months, <laughs> this book will be read. Well, I, I was, um, I was always a reader. I loved to read, and I was born in Vietnam, came to Australia when I was very young, and was essentially dumped in libraries as my second home for the longest time, uh-huh. and just picked up you know, every and any book that I could possibly get my hands on. And, uh, you know, throughout university, high school, was reading. I did law for a little while. And then during the course of one year's traveling, I decided to, you know, give fiction a go because before that I'd been writing and reading mainly poetry in in, in seriousness. You you, you have a lovely phrase in in your bio. You decided to give up the suit and the tie for writing. (laughs) (laughs) You can can see that uh, even now I'm not wearing a suit – or a collar, even. No, you're dressed for television. I mean, for radio. <laughs> Thank you. Sir. 700 pages of a novel. Uh, that was your first effort as, as a writer, you reveal. And uh, you, you, you call it a spectacular, multidimensional failure. And then you went to the <laughs> Iowa Writers' School, of course. Sure. I mean, that was a, that was a long and hard and expensive lesson, that, that novel. I'll say that much. You you do in a in a further remark give us a sense of uh, some of what goes on at that writer school, which is which is so famous and so wonderfully productive, and and uh, helpful t- to writers. You 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 say something like you you know worked on doing something with that marvelous failure, yeah, and and at the same time you began to develop these these seven stories, which are set around the globe, from Iowa to Tehran, Manhattan to Australia and uh, Columbia to uh, Hiroshima. Sure. And uh, how, how did you get from the fat novel <laughs> to this kind of little pieces? Yeah, I mean, with great difficulty, I guess, and, and also great uh, feeling of liberation. I, I was so stuck in that novel, and I never gave myself any sort of permission to move away from it, and it was just dragging me down. Mm. And so you know, to arrive in a place where short stories were being discussed and, you know, loved and workshopped and written was just a revelation for me. And so I fell in love with the form at that point and was was happy to, to do anything that was not the novel at that point. <laughs> One of the things that you bring to these to these stories is is, is uh, the notion of place, not, not just switching from place to place, which is pretty obvious when sure. you, you know, read where the where the stories are, are, are set. But uh, you, you, you've thought through this, this notion of, of place, and you say, subjectively, no two neighbors live on the same street, let alone in the same city. Sure. So that you hold place as unique? I hold place, certainly place that's uh, depicted through art, to be absolutely unique to the sensibility through which that place is being seen. So that quote that you just mentioned um, speaks to the fact that, you know, the house that you live in is very different to the house that your sister lives in or your son lives in, Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and that applies to different landscapes, different countries, different environments, every, every sort of place. Hmm. And, and you talk about fiction, which can evoke 
our familiarity with uh, uh, strange things. And there's and there's a tension that you talk about, the artifice and agenda uh, behind making familiar things strange, strange things familiar. Sure. Now, now you're really talking about what the writer as as artist does, The if yeah. you forgive the, the word manipulation. <laughs> it is manipulation. That's exactly what it is. I mean, you have, you know, a blank page and what you're doing is, you know, chucking marks onto that page and encrypting them in a certain way so that you, you know, extract certain emotions and, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and feelings from a reader. So that's exactly what it is. Well, the boat does take the reader to a lot of places and, and we'll, we'll get going to those places Jeez. when we come back. And we'll begin with Exotic Iowa. You're listening to Conversations on the Coast with Jim Foster. Follow us on Twitter at Jim Foster COC or send an email to Jim Foster COC at gmail.com. The Boat. That's the name of the book. Nam Lee is the author. The publisher, proud publisher, is Alfred A. Knopf. And uh, Mr. Lee has uh, joined us here. Where are you residing now? I, I have you in Australia and other places. I, I am actually currently between places, so I'm, I'm living out of my suitcase right now. <laughs> <laughs> you need a hotel room? We can work on that. I got Ooh, a lot of hotel rooms. I here. may take you up on that one, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> one of the other uh, people who said something nice about your book is a Pulitzer Prize winner, uh, Juno Diaz. He says, Wonderful stories that snarl and pant. Across our crazed world, only a Pulitzer Prize winner could say that snarling. I think he band, was huh? feeling animalistic that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An extraordinary performance. Nam Lee is a heartbreaker, not easily forgotten. The, the first story has an extremely long title. It does. Love and honor, pity and pride, and compassion and sacrifice. You know, and I, 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 I think that somewhere you, you've admitted. Or at least in your opinion, this may be the most autobiographical of the uh, collection, perhaps because of the Iowa writers setting of it. Sure, I mean it's not it's not autobiographical, but it does pull from autobiographical elements in my life. Yeah. Okay, and 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 the the other thing of it is that uh, <clears throat> because of uh, because of the school. Uh, as we said before, you're involved in you know getting these short stories done, mm-hmm. and this story is about a student, yes, <laughs> at the school who has writer's block. Indeed, imagine that. <laughs> and he happens to have the same name as the uh, the author of the story too. Interesting. It is interesting, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yes, and uh, the the most important part of the plot, and in my opinion, is that his father comes to visit him. Right. And this does not really relieve the writer's block that much. Mm-hmm. It's a, a pretty bad time for the dad to be visiting. That's right. And there seems to be, you know, something about their relationship, something about their, their history sure. where they've not been close and it could have been worse than that. Yeah, well, it's been three years since the, the father and son have met and – uh you know, the father has come and it's not really quite clear why he's come. And so it brings the son to a point where he's meant to be writing a story. He's got writer's block and he's dealing very, very um, torturously about the questions, what he's allowed to write about, what he's meant to write about, why he's reluctant to write about certain things, especially in relation to his background and his father's background. But he finally does get a draft written. That's right. A, a draft that he thinks is good mm-hmm. and, and one that he thinks he should and he does show to his father. Yeah. And he, he thinks he would read it, his father would read it, with his book Learned English, and he would recognize himself in a new way. He would recognize me. He would see how powerful was his experience, how valuable his suffering, how I had made it speak for more than itself. He would be pleased with me. Yeah. And that's not really what happens. What happens is, <laughs> and I'm sorry, I want to give this away for a particular reason because it, sure, it made me think of something. The father destroys the, what appears to be perhaps the only copy of, of the draft that's at right, that time. Yeah. And after I, I was mad at him when I, when I read that. Mm-hmm. And then I, I thought to myself, is, is there a, a hidden message here that the only one who can tell – your story is you? Is that what the father was saying, maybe? 
I think the father is saying a lot of things, but one of the things he's, I mean, one of the things he's saying obviously is, I don't want this story out in the world. So I, I'm going to throw it in this, you know, tank of burning gasoline. Yeah. Perhaps the thing that he's striving to say is the idea that there are some experiences which aren't equal to the words that are used to express them. And Ah. so he's been through some, you know, really, really barbaric um, experiences in the Vietnam War. He was in a re-education camp for three years. Uh, He was, you know, tortured. He was at at My Lai. He was at My Lai. He was a survivor of the My Lai massacre. And the the son is realising that, you know, if he uses this material, even if he wants to use it in a way that honours his father's story, mm-hmm. it's, it's going to be seen, as we said before, as manipulation or as, as exploitation. So the son is striving with the idea of how to tell the story with dignity and honour and at the same time, you know, as a piece of art, whereas the father is striving with the idea of whether or not this story can be told or should be told at all. Aha. Aha. And that's because the father owns that story in a way that nobody else can. It's not to say that the writer doesn't own the story, that he writes about his father or anything else, but it's a different ownership? Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's different types of ownership. And, and there are some types of ownership which can be, if you'll, you know, let me extend the metaphor, they can be liquidated, you know, they can be mm-hmm. cashed out and actually converted into something which other people can read and listen to and understand. And then there are other ownerships which are just yours and locked away forever. Columbia is one of the places that the book, The Boat, gets to. I think it's perfectly captured in this book. There's also artistic Manhattan to run. Ah, just stay tuned. (laughs) You're listening to Conversations on the Coast with Jim Foster. Follow us on Twitter at Jim Foster COC or send an email to Jim Foster COC at gmail.com. This is Jim Foster. It is Conversations on the Coast, The Boat, the collection of seven absolutely powerful, wonderful short stories by Nam Lee is today's book. The publisher is Alfred Knopf. Adam Hazlitt has this to say in part about it. Impressive. In the, in the first story of this collection, Nam Lee has already demonstrated the kind of courage and directness it takes most writers years to achieve. By the last, he's proven he can take you on a journey to almost anywhere, all in vivid and at times harrowing detail. One of the places where it's very harrowing, I think, and and also where I think you do something with the notion of place sure. that's, that's quite wonderful is the story called Cartagena. Cartagena, Cartagena yes. Car- Cartagena. And Cartagena is a city in Colombia and actually was just written up in the New York Times travel section right, a couple I that, of yeah. weeks ago. I, Whoa, let me look at that. <laughs> and it, it starts off by saying it's free of its drug problems. And no, we're, now we're back to Turista. <laughs> but this is the story, in part at least, about a 14-year-old killer, a guy who gets paid to kill people. And he's 14 years old, and he's in – the slum, the barrio, with all the stench and all the danger. And my feeling when I was reading that story is, darn it, you've put me there. I can almost smell it. I can almost feel it. So that I think your your capability to deliver the sense of place is absolutely powerful. Thank you, Jim. That means a lot. And really, I mean, I, gee, I, I wanted to get out of it after a while. I was like, I to <laughs> you take, were the only one. <laughs> take a show. <laughs> the writer was too. Time for a shower. <laughs> There's another story. This one's set in what I call artistic Manhattan. Certainly. Called Meeting Elise. Yeah. It's in a way, I guess because I'm a father, the saddest of all the stories. Sure. A man is a successful artist who having artist block. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he <laughs> has a pattern here. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't. This is a man who writes about block. <laughs> <laughs> and this artist's father uh, can't paint or draw whatever the heck it is he does yeah. anymore. And he's looking forward to one thing that I guess he thinks is going to solve some of his problems. 
and that is meeting his daughter, whom he hasn't seen for 20 years? 17, 18 years, yeah. Yeah, 17, 18 years. And she is a world-famous cellist. That's right. And he never gets to see her. Yeah, and, and part of the, part of the, you know, fundamental drive behind this story was exactly what you pinpointed, which was that idea of what's the worst hurt that a human being can feel. And it seemed to me that it must be the loss of a child for a parent. And in this case, what I thought would be even more heartbreaking in a fictional sense was the loss of a child who who's still alive. You know, so here is a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but lost. But lost to him. To, to him. Yeah, and so he's always him. got that slight hope that he, he can make that connection, he can get her back. But of course, you know, he doesn't. He's all dressed up to go to Carnegie Hall. Yeah. And, and, and to hear his uh, daughter play, and he can't get a ticket. He finally talks his way in. I can still hear her, the sound of her cello, full, sonorous, rising through my body and slowly transmuting the pain into warmth, the carry of it through the auditorium. And and it's as though my body is without substance and I'm dissolving into the sound she scratches out of her contraption of wood and steel and hair, the concert hall, the space inside my skull. That you're, is beautiful. You're a very that, good reader. That, <laughs> Sounds better coming from your you know, mouth he's, than my he's pen. He's the, you know, I mean, that's that's all he could get. Yeah. And yet he 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 gets it, and it goes on. Get up. I get up. Lighten myself, brittle, unable to hear, hold any more. I, I, I press wizzily the row of half-risen knees on the hallway stairs. The applause starts up. It sounds like rain. Then amazingly there are shouts, stamping feet. I leave the building and go outside into the brindled rain. The rain becomes iridescent into the steel lamp night above the world's dead weight. It's raining outside. I catch my breath and watch as the crowd comes out. She's coming out. She'll be out any second now. But they don't meet. They no. don't touch hands. They don't say hello. That's why I say it is, in my opinion, the saddest of all the stories. The last story, called The Boat, is really the most autobiographical, since you say in another place in your biographical notes that I am, I was, part of the boat people. That's right, yeah. And that's how you got from Vietnam to Australia. Yeah, yeah. And again, there's that sense of place, the sense of starving and thirsty and dying. Yeah. There is so much. Maybe not places you know you want to spend too much time in, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> there is so much in these seven stories. The book is called The Boat. The author is Nam Lee. This has been Conversations on the Coast, and I'm Jim Foster. Follow us on Twitter at Jim Foster C-O-C. Or send an email to jimfostercoc at gmail.com.